Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to this Palm Sunday. And we're together, both campuses, people from other places of worship. Welcome. So glad to have you. After this service, we do have a fellowship um, of coffee and donuts and other lovely things in the fellowship hall. Just go on down the hall. We'd love to have you there. Also on the inside of the pews there, there's pew pads. If you would sign those and pass those down so we can see who all's here. Please greet those sitting beside you. So Holy Week. Here are some highlights and some events. On Thursday, we have Monday, Thursday service at 7.30 p.m. at Christ Church on Yolupa Avenue. Good Friday is here at 7.30 at Montgomery, and the chancel choir and orchestra will present a moving cantata to remember Christ's passion. Saturday at 4 o'clock is the Easter egg hunt at Stony Point. Please join us for that fun event. 7.30 is the Easter vigil at Christ Church. Easter Sunday, here we go. Sunrise, for those who like to get up really early on a Sunday, it's gonna be at 6 a.m. at the Stony Point campus. There will be a regular eight o'clock and 9.30 worship services with choir and brass at both services. 11 o'clock worship will be at Stony Point and at noon, the Fijian language worship. Next on the horizon is on Saturday, April 27th, the Spring Fling at 1130, featuring Madeline O'Connell, CEO of Sonoma County YWCA as a guest speaker. Lunch is catered with a silent auction to benefit camperships for our children to go to church camp and United Methodist Women. And the tickets are available today at the Fellowship Hall. Um, more things are in our bulletin. Please look at the outreach, discipleship, and happenings for more details, and also to take with you. Let's look at it later. And right now, Naomi Nini has an announcement. I know what you're thinking. It's, <laughs> uh oh, there she is again. Today is, sadly, Pastor Sokovay's last day with us as a staff member here at the First United Methodist Church Santa Rosa. So I would invite you all to be sure to uh, take a moment and thank Pastor Sokovay and Latia for their ministry here to us the last three years. And if you were so inclined, there are SPRC members who will be out uh, in the outside the sanctuary, either on the patio or in the narthex, Mary Pontiasi is holding up a, a, an opportunity, if you would like to show your appreciation to Pastor Sokovi, we're taking a love offering. Um, and so that will be available, and um, we will be sure to thank him. All right, moving on to our worship. There'll be a call to worship on your screen. Um, please respond as you will. Cry out, people of faith, rejoice and praise God. If, if we, we did not sing praise, the very stones would cry out. Cry out, people of faith, for your Savior draws near to Jerusalem. Hosanna, God saves. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Blessed is Jesus Christ, who did not turn back for fear of the cross. <laughs> Let us praise God, who loves us, sharing Christ's sufferings and facing with courage our path of faith. Hosanna, God saves. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. And now the prayer. Please join. Almighty God, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came riding into Jerusalem on a lowly beast. He found victory through love, not violence. Help us learn the meaning of power and of glory through Christ, who took on the form of a servant and shared our human life and sufferings. 
May we truly participate in the life and struggles of the world's peoples for the salvation of all. Amen. A prayer dedicating our gifts to God. Holy God, your... Oh. We'll do that later. <laughs> After he said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage in Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying, it, untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. 
As they rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road, as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Thank you. I understand that Palm Sunday in the Fijian tradition is Children's Sunday, so those children will be leading their worship service beginning at noon today. And thanks for all uh, your participation today. It is good to be together as one church and uh, share in um, worship and music and even a parade today. We're glad that you're here. In the United States, the Major League Baseball season is off and running two weeks into the 2019 season. All right. Some fans are out there. Their fans are gathering, filling up the stadiums. They're eager to cheer their teams on to victory. I would imagine that we have some Oakland A's fans in the house. Raise your hand if you're an A's fan. Uh... Okay, how about San Francisco Giants, raise your hand. Oh, wow, okay. I tried, Oakland. I... How about some other team? Raise your hand. Oh, Cardinals, okay. All right. Well, lots of baseball fans we have out there. In Fiji, the favorite sport is rugby. And I understand that this weekend in Suva, there's a rugby tournament. Some of the names of their teams are the Flying Fijians, 
<laughs> the Fiji Warriors and the Fijiana women's team. So, yeah. How many rugby fans are out there this morning? All right, we've got a few. All right. Well, some of us have even been players on teams. Some of our children and youth are on the baseball teams right now, out there pitching and catching and uh, hitting the balls. Many of us are fans now sitting in the stands or watching on TV. Sometimes that's by choice or because we have other talents or sometimes we've simply aged out of the games. <laughs> Many fans have great loyalty to their teams, even following them around the country for their games or championships. Some fans are somewhat fickle, changing loyalty depending upon a team's performance during the year. Some of us jump on the bandwagon at the end of the season if our team is really doing well. While fans experience the highs and the lows of games and seasons, they do so at a distance from the team that's really playing there on the field. Now, a few of us may have been in a parade, marched in the band, rode on a float, or perhaps rode on a horse, Maybe you've twirled the baton or rode in an antique car. More of us have probably been sitting on the side of the curb or standing on the sidewalk as spectators of the parade cheering on the participants as we did this morning. Now the role of cheering fans is exciting, but it still is different than actually marching in the parade to the beat of the drum. Palm Sunday begins with a parade. The Grand Marshal is Jesus riding on a donkey. In Jesus' day, parades tended to be for kings and conquering generals who paraded into a town to announce their authority at the crowd's as the crowd sang and as they cheered. Jesus' parade is like this kind of welcoming ceremony for a ruler. But there are some elements in Jesus' parade that are different than the parade for an earthly king in his day. The first difference is Jesus' choice of a donkey. Kings and military leaders are usually transported by a horse, which is a symbol of power and might. A donkey is used by the common folk to carry people and goods. David's son, Solomon, rode on a donkey when he went to be anointed as a king. The prophet Zechariah declared that the Messiah would be humble and come riding on a donkey. Jesus comes not on an animal of power and might, but on a beast of burden that helped carry things that the people needed. Now, a second important symbol in this story is the spreading of cloaks on the roadway where Jesus walked. In our day, when a celebrity comes, we roll out the red carpet. The Fijians lay mats or tapa cloth on the floor so that the feet of important guests do not touch the dirt. In Jesus' day, spreading the clothing on the roadway is a sign of approval or praise. Now, the garments that were spread before Jesus would not have been fine and elegant robes. They would have been tattered shawls and dusty, sweat-stained rags. For the fans of Jesus were typically poor. They were sinners and outcasts whom Jesus had welcomed and loved. Now the palms that we have waved today were a symbol of victory in the Roman Empire. If we listened carefully to the scripture reading, we didn't hear palms mentioned. The Gospel of John is the only gospel to mention palms in connection to Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. 
Matthew mentions branches cut from trees, and Mark says there were leafy branches. But we wave palm branches anyway. (laughs) The song sung by the disciples come from Psalm 118. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. It's a song used for entering the temple when a leader is placed on the throne. Jesus comes in as a new leader who brings the peace that comes from heaven, the peace that comes from God. Now by this time, people have seen the mighty works of Jesus which have brought peace to many people. The healings of Jesus, the feeding of the multitudes, the conversion of people. Jesus is praised as a king who pours out peace in heaven upon the earth. All of these signs and symbols, the parade, the donkey, the cloaks, the palms, and the song point to the entrance of an important leader. Jesus is a royal leader but he has a different style of leading than others. He rules not by the power of force, but with the power of tenderness. He comes not as a lord of war, but as the prince of peace. His reign will bring peace on earth and glory to God. As we begin this Holy Week, here's a question for us. What's our role in the Palm Sunday processional? Are we curious onlookers standing on the sidelines waving our palms for the hero, but disappearing when the hero demands our action? Are we sideline Christians willing to admire at events that are enjoyable, but vanishing when difficult things are required of us? Are we fans watching the parade or are we followers marching in step with Jesus even as far as the cross? A follower is someone who attaches him or herself to another one who is a teacher. A follower makes a commitment to imitate the service of the leader. A follower steps from the sidelines to march in the parade, walking in the footsteps of Jesus. A follower says, not only I believe, but goes on to say, because I believe, therefore I will act like the leader whom I follow. Following Jesus has an ethical dimension that's expressed in our behavior. Following Jesus includes wisely caring for God's creation. Following Jesus means speaking words of kindness, not words that are hurtful. Followers of Jesus treat everyone with dignity and respect. They listen carefully, and they consider the well-being of other people. When others look at our lives, do they see us as a fan in name only, or do they see us as a follower? who loves God with all our heart and soul, our mind, and who loves our neighbors as ourselves? Do they recognize that we seek not to follow our personal preferences, but that we seek to live by the mind and the love of Christ Jesus? We're familiar with some of the difficult things that Jesus teaches his disciples, love your enemies, forgive one another 70 times 7, offer hospitality to the stranger, show compassion to the poor. Jesus often made people feel uncomfortable for he taught that God's way is not always the way of the world. He often turns our understandings upside down. He answers questions with parables that keep people thinking. He asks questions that keep people shaking their heads, asking, what does he really mean by that? 
Jesus doesn't always confirm our beliefs. Jesus sees things as God sees them and does things that God desires. One day there was a soldier, an Israeli soldier in Israel. He was patrolling in an occupied area of Palestine. Suddenly he felt a rock hit him in the back. And before he had a chance to turn around, another rock hit him in the shoulder and another rock hit him on his helmet. He whirled around to see some Palestinian children. They were picking up more stones to throw at him. Although he was angry, the soldier wanted to stop the fighting without hurting the children. Suddenly he had an idea. He bent down and he picked up the three rocks that had been thrown at him. He picked them up and he began to juggle. He juggled those stones that had been thrown at him. The children were fascinated and they forgot all about throwing stones. He did a few tricks and the children laughed and laughed. He did a grand finale, and they applauded. He took a bow, and he walked away. That soldier took what had been meant to hurt him, and he transformed those stones into objects of wonder. He took the stones thrown at him, but he chose not to throw them back in anger or revenge. He transformed those stones into toys of laughter and rocks of reconciliation. He became an agent of change. That's what followers of Jesus do. We seek to bring the peace of God that Jesus brings to us in his death and his resurrection. Christ took the cross and he transformed it into a symbol of salvation. He transformed the hatred that was hurled at him into a force for goodness and for peace. As we enter this Holy Week, let us be more than fans who cheer Jesus on. Let us follow Jesus onto the playing field, dare to live by his teachings, and strive to love as Jesus loved. Amen. the king of his people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are the light in the darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are the still to be done in the city. Greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done here. The God of creation, 
the creator of all things. You're the king above all kings. You are. You're the strength and the weakness. You're the love to the broken. You're the joy and the sadness. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like you, God. Greater things have yet to come and greater things to still be begun in the city. shines with hearts alive with praise for you and love for you in the city. Greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done in the city. Greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done here. invite you to steal your hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, this day we raise our palms in praise of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We hail him for his saving grace, which lifted people from hopelessness to hope from illness to wholeness, from sadness to joy. We confess, O God, that we have not always been faithful followers of Jesus. Sometimes we've held back from action that would have helped our neighbor. Sometimes we have spoken words that have been harmful to our neighbor. There are even times when we act out our anger in hurtful ways. Forgive us, O God. Teach us the loving ways of Jesus. Help us think not just of ourselves, but of you and the words and actions that bring you honor and glory. We give you thanks, O God, for the ministry of Pastor Sokove among us. We have been blessed by his deep faith in you, O God. Bless him as he is promoted to serve the Fijian language ministries of California, Nevada. May his ministry bring those ministries strength and unity. We pray for our Fijian language ministry and its sorrow upon his departure. Open us all to the new opportunities that you always bring us as we are reminded by Easter. We ask your prayers, O God, for healing peace for the Rod Rodrow family as they continue in the midst of deep grief. 
May all who move through loss know your caring presence with them. We lift our prayers for those who are ill. We name before you Ken, Jeff, John, Larry, Daryl, George, Sarah, Alfred, Gerald, Shirley, and others whom we name in our hearts. May the saving presence of Christ be present within your church, O God. You know the issues that threaten to divide us. We want to discern a path for the future that honors the dignity of all your sons and daughters. Lead us, O God, in the light of your great love. We pray for the world which Christ came to save, a world scarred by ingratitude and injustice, a world where Christ's compassion is often hidden by jealousy, greed, and personal agendas. We cry, Hosanna, save us, O God. We recommit ourselves to the journey with Christ into Jerusalem and into the Jerusalems of our own lives. We dare to risk even a tiny portion of what Jesus risked that we might proclaim the love of Jesus in our lives every day. With each breath, help us to give thanks for the life we have received from you and the new life we receive from Christ. We unite our voices together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
I'll now say the prayer dedicating our gifts to God. Holy God, you are a generous giver. You gave your son, Jesus, and through him, you offer guidance, forgiveness, grace, and salvation. In praise and thanksgiving, we offer these gifts and our very lives that we might give honor and glory to your beloved Son, our Savior. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. This is the word of God for the people of God. As we move into Holy Week, we move from the praise and acclamation of Palm Sunday toward Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday when Jesus was crucified. Remembering that day, we join in singing, Were You There? First, second, and fourth verses. I invite you to stand as you are able to sing.
My friends in Christ, let us go forth to be there for Jesus, with Jesus, through this holy week. Not just as fans, but more importantly as followers, walking in the footsteps of Jesus, loving as he, he loved, giving as he gave. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the healing presence of the Holy Spirit walk with you this day and every day. Amen.